Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life. Are you ready to start living your life to the fullest? Are you ready and willing to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Welcome, my friends, to The Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. In the previous episode, I covered an assessment between three types of spirituality, one that I wouldn't really classify as spirituality, but I put it in there anyway. And one of the things that I came across since then was Jack Canfield's Wednesday Wisdom. And Jack Canfield is a famous coach. Um, I have a lot of respect for him. I've actually went through his coaching program, and uh, it was phenomenal. And of course, one of his best-selling books, in my opinion, is The Success Principles. So he posts some things that are based on The Success Principles. And this is uh, a, a great way to understand two different frames of mind when it comes to spirituality. Jack gives a very down-to-earth, pretty practical approach, especially in regards to the law of attraction. But anyway, this is what he posted. As you remove toxic people from your life, you free up space and emotional energy for positive, healthy relationships. And this statement was made by John Mark Green, and Jack used this uh, in this post. And what was interesting is there was a response by Uhas Thakar, and his response was, your job is not to remove toxic people. Your job is to remove toxicity present within you, which reacts and attracts toxic people. And this is how they keep away naturally. So I'd like to address these different types of approaches and take a look at what is the truth of the matter and take that one step further and offer you a five-point formula for removing toxicity, people, environment, situations from your life. As I've covered in several previous podcasts, and what should be incredibly obvious by now to everyone is that we are indeed in a time of great change and human beings naturally resist change. Human beings gravitate towards the easiest path and change is usually not the easiest path. But this time of change is due to the natural shift from a yang dominant energy to a yin dominant energy in the natural cycle of balance between these two forces that is always taking place. In addition, we have the great consciousness shift. This is providing a lot of change and a lot of chaos. So generally in times as extreme as these, people have a tendency to react in one of two ways. They either retreat deeper into their ego sleep which will result in a greater sense of uh, toxicity within themselves, or they begin to awaken. And when we awaken, we are able to reduce, if not abandon altogether, any sense of toxicity. Because most of the time, if not 100% of the time, toxicity is just a symptom of the ego. So we can see this is the case with the way people are so divided right now, especially in the United States. So this is the root of why they're divided right now. And it's a natural process that may not seem pleasant, but it is still natural and necessary because human beings need this kind of push in order to change, even if that change is awakening. I mean, look at how many people are not mentally strong enough, courageous enough 
to engage the practices of real authentic spirituality. So right now we have people that are becoming more toxic and creating greater toxic environments. And then we have another set of people who are beginning to awaken and they're starting to lose uh, that toxic nature and they're, they're overcoming the ego and they're stepping into a, a more pleasant environment, which they themselves are helping to create. So let's examine the idea of these two seemingly opposite uh, approaches. One is by removing toxic people out of our life, and the other is by working on ourselves and not removing toxic people, but removing our own toxicity. When it comes to toxic people in our life or toxic environments, it's kind of like the chicken or the egg. Which comes first? Which should we get rid of first? Should we get rid of toxic people first? Or should we work on ourselves first in order to get rid of toxic people? Should we distance ourselves from toxic people first? Or begin working on ourselves first, making sure that we don't get pulled into reacting to them or attracting them into our life? So let's break this down. Yes, it is absolutely up to each of us to work on ourselves so that we stop reacting to toxic people and stop attracting them into our lives. However, we also have to understand that we cannot change people any more than we can prevent all toxic people from entering into our life at some time or another. In addition to that, what are we to do with the toxic people who are already in our life? Will they just magically go away because we stop reacting to them? So what exactly are we supposed to do to handle the toxicity in our life? Because we have some people that just say, oh, push those people out of your life or leave those people, separate from them, and it's done. But when we do that, do the people actually go away and stay away? Sometimes maybe they do, sometimes maybe they don't. On the other hand, we have people like in the New Age type of, of uh, approach where they believe as long as they're uh, a good person and trying to have a high vibration alone without engaging in much for actual authentic practices to overcome their own ego and the root of toxicity, that they then will stop attracting that into their lives. And that isn't a magic fix-all. The law of attraction doesn't quite work that way because everybody is using the law of attraction consciously or unconsciously. So we can't stop, even if we have just a high vibration, that's not magically going to make it so people who are toxic stop entering into our life. So what are we to do with all of this and how can we make sense of this in a practical, usable manner that will allow us to actually flush this sense of toxicity out of our lives. That's what I'd like to share with you. I've had my fair share of toxic experiences and people in my life. And I have also observed with so many other people the same type of situation. And I'm sure, especially in my younger years, uh, I served to be the toxic person for other people as well. This is one of the things that I sought to change through authentic spiritual practices. I didn't want to be that to anyone anymore. So I would like to offer this to you for your consideration. First, when we consider toxicity, let's look at that because we could be referring to a toxic person. Now, this could be a romantic relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be a family member. It can be a co-worker. Now, we also can have toxic environments such as a toxic home. We can have a toxic workplace and we can have a lot of different toxicity this way. And I encourage you to look at it uh, from all of those perspectives. And I think you'll find that this five-point formula for flushing toxicity out of your life will apply to all of it, any type of relationship, any type of environment. First, on the very practical side of this, if you have someone who is toxic in your life, distance yourself from them. You can't change them. 
their toxicity will only get worse because by staying with them, you enable it. And you are letting them believe that it's okay for them to be toxic and treat you however they're treating you or to create a toxic environment. When we break free from that type of environment and from their negativity and low vibration, we put ourselves in a better place, a more neutral place from which to begin working on ourselves. Because it's incredibly difficult, I can tell you from my own experience, it is incredibly difficult to work on yourself when you're getting beat down and manipulated at every turn. Remember, toxic people want you to stay the way you are and will not like it one bit when you begin to transform yourself for the better, which can intensify their toxic reactions towards you. So if you are trying to work on yourself and and better yourself and not be toxic yourself, while you're in that environment, they sense this and they're going to do their best to pull you down. This happens even with a work environment. I can share this from a a personal relationship, a home environment, and I can also share this from a work environment where you're doing your best going, you know, I'm going to get up this morning. I'm going to be positive. I'm feeling great. I'm going to go into work. I'm just going to be great all day and I'm not going to let anything or anyone affect me and I'm going to keep my vibration high. And it, it, it's like shark smelling blood in the water. As soon as you arrive, the people with a lower vibration feel the difference. They feel that you don't fit in and they start to attack you. And it's like even people that are normally decent have a, they find some reason to attack you. Anything to try and bring your vibration down to where they are. Why? Because misery loves company. And they will always do that trying to get you to fit in. It's a lot easier than trying to raise themselves up to where you are. So you can see the challenges when you are in an environment like that, whether it's home or work, and trying to work on yourself, it is incredibly challenging. So if we remain in a toxic environment or toxic relationship, it can actually be damaging to our mental, emotional, and even physical health. And we can never allow another to diminish any of these aspects of our health. Now, you may need to get away from the toxicity just to get your footing on neutral ground. There's nothing wrong with that. Many people seem to believe that when they enter a relationship, that they can change the person to be who they want them to be. And as we know, this is a fool's game. Even in the off chance, the person does begin to change. Then they're no longer attracted to that person because they're not the same person that they were attracted to. Entering into a toxic relationship or remaining in one, believing the person will change, usually does not end well. By doing so, you're just enabling their toxic behavior. No one has the power over someone else to cause them to stop being toxic. We wish that could be the case, and a lot of times we try so hard, but the bottom line is it doesn't work. Only they can make the decision to change in that way. And let's face it, while it's possible, in most cases, it's highly unlikely to happen. So having the strength to separate yourself from the toxicity of another is indeed a necessary step that cannot be ignored in favor of trying to no longer attract that because that person is already entrenched in your life. And we may want to believe that, well, as I improve myself and I am no longer toxic um, and I'm working on that sort of thing um, and I'm not reacting to to their toxicity anymore, uh, maybe they'll just go away on their own. I can tell you I've been through that relationship and it doesn't happen. Their ego simply won't allow it. Now, the problem is a lot of times people separate themselves from another toxic person, be it a relationship or friend or family member, 
And once they do this, they think that it's done and over. But in my observation, this is often not the case. So to look at this, let's look at it as a toxic friendship. Maybe we have a friend who's a rather toxic person. And then before long, uh, we, we had enough. We can't take that toxicity anymore, so we separate ourselves uh, from that friend. And then a little bit of time goes by, and what happens? Oh, they're right back in their life, right? They're, they're back, and they're hanging around together again, and that same toxic friend is there in their life again, and again, and again. This is because people are oftentimes too mentally weak and lack the courage and the strength to stay away from someone, to just say no and to stick to it. And they still dwell in their own ego because separating ourselves from a toxic person is not enough. That's when we have to engage in specific practices that allow us to purge our own toxicity and help to abandon the ego. Because if we fail to do that, then what happens is we have a tendency to still secretly desire the drama of the toxicity and the ability to feel superior over someone else. And then this becomes part of our identity and it reinforces our ego and our own toxicity. So usually these same people are the ones who are insisting the loudest that they don't want that type of drama in their life anymore. And yet they turn around, open the door, and invite it right back in. This is why I observe people's actions, and I pay little attention to their words. Because their actions truly do speak louder than their words, and much more truthfully. So, some of my personal advice, which I finally learned to take... When you make the decision to step out of a toxic relationship, make sure you are prepared to never look back. It doesn't mean that we harbor ill feelings or any negativity towards anyone. We simply understand that where they're at in their journey, they are still toxic. We choose not to be that way, so we aren't going to associate with that. Wish them the best. And don't do anything that would be harmful to them. Just simply separate yourself from them or the environment. Okay, and now let's take a look at this idea of learning how to stop reacting to and attracting this toxicity uh, in the hopes that it will magically go away. Will it go away? Uh, This is a kind of a a double-edged sword. On one hand, yes, you will stop attracting that to you if you stop reacting to it and you stop attracting it to you. We attract it to us by being toxic ourselves. Remember, like attracts like. So, we also have to realize, however, that by doing this, the toxic people that are already well entrenched in our life aren't going anywhere. They aren't going to magically disappear. So you can see that we we need actually a combination of these things in a very practical formula in order to make sure that it works. Remaining in a toxic environment or relationship of any kind can really drag you down. And every time you try to raise your vibration, they will usually come along and do something toxic to pull you back down. When you react to their toxicity, you are allowing them to drag your vibration back down. We have to understand that the reaction, even if it's well-deserved, still generally comes from our own ego. So we have to be able to no longer uh, react to that toxicity, which in itself can be quite challenging. A toxic person generally strives to bring others to a place that matches their lower vibrational frequency or even take yours lower than theirs so they feel better about themselves. This is usually accomplished through fear, pain, guilt, and shame. And it's this reason 
as to why when we react to them, to their toxicity from a place of ego, they succeed. If we still dwell in ego ourself, then we'll enjoy the thrill of the drama, even if we profess we don't, at which point we're no better than they are. Egoic reactivity and negativity serves to keep us imprisoned in these toxic, downward spiraling cycles. It's the ego that causes us to be reactive instead of responsive. This is clearly seen in women who are attracted to the typical bad boy persona, as well as within men who are attracted to the typical hot mess persona. Let's face it, the bad boys and the hot messes are toxic people. And the people that crave that sort of thing are toxic themselves, like attracts like. So be careful of these traps. We are told that these are good things, they're cool, right? Not the case. This is why we must recognize the cycle we're in if we're in a cycle such as this. Then we have to accept responsibility for it. Instead of blaming the other person, which we do from ego, we have to accept responsibility for it. So you can see that no longer reacting to toxic people is an important part of this. When we look at the vibrational aspect of attraction, by learning how to raise our vibration and maintain that higher vibrational frequency, we then enter into a space where we no longer tend to attract toxic people into our life via any sort of relationship or environment. However, being out in the world and interacting with others we are sure to still encounter toxic people from time to time. There is no escaping it when you're out in the world living with billions of other people. So the idea when something like that happens is to not react to them. When we react to them, our vibration lowers. So we don't react to them. We keep our vibration high, and then we separate ourselves from that, right? So we don't invite them into our life in any aspect whatsoever. So when we're out in the world, and we have our nice high vibration, everything's going great, feeling good, we have to recognize it when we run into somebody like that and acknowledge it. We can't ignore it. Hey, it's reality. When that happens, we just check our own vibration, make sure it stays high, we don't react, and then we take measures to get out of there, right? To end whatever sort of relationship this is, even if it's just something that lasts four or five minutes. Having a high vibration doesn't mean that we'll never encounter these types of toxic people. It just means that we have the ability to stop attracting them so that they enter into our life. Once we attain a high vibration and learn to maintain it, you can never find it acceptable again to allow anyone else to cause your vibration to lower. And for the most part, those people will stay away. So oftentimes, the New Age people who try to engage the law of attraction fail to realize that we have to understand space. And when we have a certain amount of space in our lives and that space is filled with toxic people, there's no room for non-toxic people to come in. Sometimes we have to get rid of the toxic people so the non-toxic people have room to come into our lives. It's the same thing that you, you do if you are looking to attract uh, a person into your life romantically, um, you have to make sure that you have two pillows on your bed. You have to make sure there's room in your closet or dresser, right? You have to make room. This, this sends that uh, vibration out into the universe, letting the universe know you're ready. You have room for somebody to come into your life. And sometimes we have to get rid of toxic people in order to allow non-toxic, more positive people to enter our life. We get more positive energy uh, that way that can enter into our life by getting rid of the negative energy. I could give so many examples 
of different types of toxic relationships that I went through uh, in my life. And now that is no longer the case. And I can tell you, life is so much better. But it took engaging in authentic spiritual practices, allowing me to begin to awaken and allowing me to raise my vibration, open my heart and live in a place of constant appreciation, love and joy. But in order to do so, I had to engage in those practices that would allow me to abandon my ego. And when the ego goes away, the toxic nature of the false self goes with it. Okay, so here's a pretty simple formula that worked for me. It's worked for other people that I have prescribed it to. And maybe it can work for you too. Try it. If you need to alter it to fit you and your lifestyle in whatever way, that's fine. But at least give it a shot. Uh, And I hope, I I truly hope that it works for you. Um, I've used this in personal and professional relationships, as well as in various environments, and it has always served me well. Step number one, recognize and admit that you are in a toxic relationship or environment. First, we have to recognize it and we have to be willing to admit that that's the case. That is when we start to accept some responsibility for what's going on there. As long as we blame the other, we'll never be successful in getting rid of the toxicity because we ourselves are somewhat toxic. So recognize it, admit it, take responsibility for it. We can't ever fix a problem if we don't know It's a problem. Step number two, develop an exit strategy and then summon the courage to separate yourself from it and don't look back. Step number three is taking the actual action necessary to separate yourself from that relationship or environment. This can be the difficult part. This is where you actually close some doors. This is when you act on making the hard calls. It's very easy for people to think about it, to even talk about it. But taking action is a whole nother story, and that's why it has its own step in this process. It is at the end of this step that you are now free from that current toxic relationship or environment. Step number four. Begin working on yourself through actual authentic practices that will help you abandon the ego so that you can stop reacting to the toxicity of others and at the same time abandon your own sense of toxicity so you are no longer toxic. Step number five, begin working on yourself through authentic practices so that you no longer attract these types of people's environment or situations into your life. This is where you work at raising your vibration and maintaining that vibration so you no longer attract negative, toxic people or situations into your life. Instead, you attract positive, supportive, loving high vibrational people and situations into your life. Remember, like attracts like. If you are no longer toxic and you have a high vibration and you are living in a place of love, joy, and appreciation, then that is the type of people you will begin attracting into your life and the type of situations you will encounter, and the types of environments you will find yourself in because you have made the space for that and you have worked on yourself so that you are deserving of it. So you may find yourself asking, Robert, is there a hidden sixth key? (laughs) I know my wife will get that one. Yes, there is a hidden sixth key. Go figure. Yes, there is. Enjoy the rest of your life. 
And with that, my friends, I would ask you to visit me at www.expansionmastery.com. You can grab your signed copy of Expansion Mastery, grab a fantastic ebook that is there, newly revised and expanded. Check out some of the blog posts and enjoy yourselves. I would also appreciate all of your support uh, on social media, doing the shares, subscribe, likes, comments, all of those things. That really helps. And together we can put some positive energy out into the world and hopefully help people awaken and come to the side of non-toxicity in this consciousness shift. Till next time, my friends, I wish you the very best in your practices and your life. Take care.